In 1899, a Spanish neuroscientist, Santiago Ramon, who was the first person of Spanish origin to win a scientific Nobel Prize, died in neuron in actual brain tissue and looked at them on the microscope. And while looking at them, he drew what he saw. He saw two neurons that have all these branches coming out of them towards their top parts, and then each of the neurons has the threads coming out towards the bottom, a very long one. Hundreds of his drawings illustrating brain cells are still in use since the mid of the 20th century for education and training purposes. And now, the technology has evolved and we can see neurons much closer and we can draw how it looks exactly. A neuron is the basic building block of an artificial neural network. In this image, we see an actual real-life neurons that have been smeared into a glass and colored and observed through a microscope. This is what they look like, quite an interesting structure, with a body and tail and kind of branches coming out of them. But the question is, how can we recreate it in a machine? Because the whole purpose of deep learning is to mimic how the human brain works in the hope to create amazing infrastructure for the machine to be able to learn since the human brain is one of the most powerful learning tools on the planet. Our first challenge it took is to create an artificial neural network to recreate the human neurons. So how to do that? In this video, we will explore the fascinating world of artificial neural network. We will start by looking at the function of a human neuron, how the human brain works, why we are trying to replicate that, what the primary building block of a neural network is, and what the neuron looks like. The human brain demonstrates the presence of infinite neural networks that are capable of completing the cognitive, perceptual, and control tasks as that a human excel. It is able to compute difficult perceptual acts, such as speech and face recognition, as well as control operation, for example, body movement and function. A generalization of mathematical models of biological nervous system is called an artificial neural network. Artificial neural networks have been used to solve issues as diverse as voice recognition, protein, secondary structure prediction, cancer categorization, and gene prediction. In this figure, we see a neuron that is very similar to what Santiago Ramon drew. We can see it has a body, which is the neuron, which is the main part of the neuron, and it has some branches at the top, which are called dendrites and it has an axon, which is the long tail. The key point to understand is that neurons by themselves are not strong, but they, by having multiple neurons, they can work together to do magic. And how do they work together? That's the question. That's what the dendrite and axon are for. Dendrites are the receiver of the signal of the neuron, and the axon is the transmitter of the signal of the neuron. In this image, we can see how it all works conceptually. At the top, we get the neuron and see that its dendrites are connected to the axon of other neuron further above it. And we can see that the top neuron has its signal travel down through its axon to the dendrite of the next neuron. And that's how it is connected. In this enlarged image, we can see that the axon does not actually touch the dendrite and it has proven that there is no physical touch. But the point we are interested in is that the connection between them and how the signal is transmitted is called synapse. So basically, that's how the neuron works. The signal is passed from one neuron to another through a synapse. Now, how are we going to create neuron in the machine? In this figure, we can see that the neuron gets some input signal, dendrites, and it has an output signal, axon. But again, we are going to call it a synapse. Then here, we can see that these input signals are going to be represented with the neuron inputs. 
So in this specific case, we can see that the neuron is getting signals from other neurons. The neuron is getting its signal from the input layer, which is other neuron. But sometimes we will have neuron getting their, getting their signal from another hidden input layer. In this analogy of the human brain, the input layer is your senses. So we can say that the human brain is living inside a box and all it is getting are electric impulses. It cannot hear or see. It is just receiving electric impulses as input signal. It is making sense of the world through our senses. And in terms of machine learnings, these are the independent variables. For the input variable, the signal is passed in through synapse to the neuron and then the neuron has an output value that is passed farther down the chain. In this layer, we have inputs which are the independent variables. These input variables are for one single observation, one row in the database, that we are using for training the model or performing some prediction. The first step we need to do is to standardize the independent variable which means they should have a mean of zero and a variance of one, or normalize them, which means that we have to subtract the minimum value from each variable, and then divide that by the maximum minus the minimum. So by the range of the values to get values between zero and one. It depends on the scenario. You may want to do one over the other, but basically all these input variables need to be quite similar in about the same range of value so that it will be easier for the neural network to process them and work properly. Here we got the output variables. The output can be continuous, for example price, or binary, for example yes or no, or categorical. The output will not be just one value, it will be several output values. Again, on the left we have a single observation as the independent variable, and on the right, we have a single observation as output, and they are both from the same observation. Here we get synapses, and each one of them is assigned weight. Keep in mind that weights are crucial to the artificial neural network functioning because weights are how the neural network works, and by adjusting the weights, the neural network decides in every single case which signal is important and which signal is not important to pass to the neuron. So, so weights are crucial for training the model and they get adjusted through the process of learning. So when you are training an artificial neural network, you are basically adjusting all the weight in all the synapses across the whole neural network. And that's where gradient descent and break propagation comes into play, which we will discuss later. The first step that happens in the neuron when receiving the signal is the summation of all the input values multiplied by the weight straightforward. The second step is the activation function, which we will discuss later in the next video, which is assigned to the neuron. The activation function will be applied to the weighted sum, and based on this, the neuron will understand if it needs to pass on the signal or not. In this step 3, the neuron passes the signal to the next neuron down the line. And finally, this whole process is repeated over the neural network thousands of times while training it, depend on how many neurons and synapses we have in our neural network. And by this, we reach the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if so, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.